Good evening, friends. How are you doing? Okay, perfect. Good evening, Riddhi. Um, Praveen, uh, be in touch with the VGLD team. Be in touch with the uh, Bulbul. She's going to update you on the same. Be in touch with the VGLD team. So they'll help you out with that same. Have you guys, have you guys uh, got uh, linked with your 88 learnings where you can see the recordings? Get the, uh, get the details of that also. So that in case you're missing the lecture, you can see the recordings also. Good evening, Priya. Okay, let's start. Let's start the session. Uh, how many, have, have you never done accounts never done finance how many of you anyone who has never done finance or accounts who's just not aware what is account what is debit what is credit so everyone has done a bit of account or finance right perfect so we will start with the first module guys we'll start with the first module uh so I'll start with the first unit, but in the first unit, if you see the first unit we are having is the accounting cycle, which is going to be a very basic of accounting. In that case, the basic general entries and everything is going to be covered in that case. I'm leaving for your homework. I'm leading for your, for your reading. Okay. You must be thinking <laughs> we are starting the class and with the homework. But the point is, is this, this material is not relevant at all. In that case, they have just given for your brush up right so if you want to brush up your basic accounting concept it is just that only so not relevant for the purpose of the cma exam of yours is just for your reference only sorry i'm just going to take a minute okay so basically the first module, which is just the optional background thing. It's not necessary for you to do that. It is not the part of the CMA. It's just for your brush up. Okay. Please do it in the homework. Just read it in the homework. If you have any issues, let me know tomorrow or day after whenever you get a time, please let me know. Uh, what we'll do, is we'll do some MCQs in that case. Definitely all the MCQs of the same I'm going to do with you. So that if you find any challenges in the MCQs, you will be able to do that. I'll start with the financial statement, guys. Financial statement, second module in that case. How many kinds of financial statements do we have, guys? What, how many types of financial statements do we have? Three. Um, can you help me? What are the names? Balance sheet, brilliant. PNL, absolutely. Cash flow statement, correct. Cash flow statement. Broadly, what you're saying is absolutely correct. These are the three statements in that case we are having. But sometimes we are having a statement of changes of the equity. Changes in the equity. That means how your equity share capital is changing in that case. We discuss that also. We will also discuss how it is going to be OCI. OCI is going to be other comprehensive income. We'll discuss that also. So broadly, smallly, if I talk about these are the some other statement, but what you're saying is absolutely correct. Three main, these are the three main financial statements. Everyone, all the three statements, whatever you discussed, balance sheet, profit and loss, and the cash flow statement. Do you make it for the full period? That means, do you make it for the full year? Is it for the full year? Is it for the full period? That means my question is, if I'm looking the year, let's say 1st January, 2020, 31st December, 2020. So I'm asking is the PNL, is the cash flow statement, is the balance sheet, everything is for the full year? Is the balance sheet is also for the full year? Correct, it could be monthly and consolidated, but my point is Shekhar, balance sheet is also for the full year everyone? It's as at, what does that mean, uh, John? 
particular point of time what is the meaning of particular point of time it's as on date right it's as on date why why are we are saying the as on date why are we saying as on date see let's look at the item of the balance sheet right what do we have in the balance sheet in the balance sheet we are having assets we are having liabilities we are having many things we are having cash we are having inventory in that case for example guys if i come to you for example if i come to you and if i ask you how much cash you are having how much cash you are having or maybe let's say how many assets you are having how many cars let's say you are having in that case and i ask you on the 13th of august i ask you and ask you how much cash you are having let's say let's say simply cash on 13 agents you say that i have almost let's say in my bank account 5 lakhs correct let's say if i come tomorrow let's say i come after a week let's say i come on 30th uh, 20th august 2022 in that case in your bank account bank account would there still be 5 lakhs rupees in your bank account is it necessary that it is going to be 5 lakhs only no it might go up also hopefully and it might go down also in case you have incurred any expenditure so it is going to change so that is why guys balance sheet is as on date right so what is your cash position of 5 lakhs what is your cash position of the 5 lakhs or any asset which you are having in that case that shows you the position of only one day it shows the position of only one day in that case not for the full year that is why why we say about the balance sheet that's why we say the balance sheet is as on date which is generally the last date of the year which is generally the last day of the year so whenever i say that my debt is let's say $10000 my equity is let's say $50000 i am just showing the position as on the last date maybe a day before that maybe on 30th let's say 30th december my loan could be let's say $60000 or maybe on the 1st of january also my loan will again go on 80000 but it does not matter because we are looking only one day is that point clear everyone are we good okay um we are going to quickly cover few uh, journal entries also in that case so that after that i'm going to move to that which you can read the rest of it in the homework if i talk about journal entries guys how many rules we are having for the journal entries is there any particular set of rules we are having for journal entries three rules we are having please help me out with that what are the rules for journal entry debit credit debit the income sorry credit the income credit the gains uh credit the gains credit the liabilities right what is going to be debited in that case debit all the expenses all the losses and the assets then we discussed what is going to be credit the giver absolutely very good credit the giver debit the receiver any other rule i think we are missing one am i missing any one correct very good very good debit what comes in credit what goes out absolutely what goes out correct i'm not spending more time guys because you are already aware of it so just practice everything and you'll be fine correct absolutely these are the basic three fundamentals we are doing for the general entries and everything is going to be hover around to that only correct okay whatever the financial statements guys we talk talk about 
what are the basic use of the financial statement why do we use the finance what is the purpose of use of the financial statement okay if i ask guys uses of the financial statement uses of the financial statement if i talk about let's say this is the company let's say the company is tcs now tcs financials you are looking as a investor you are looking that means you are looking to invest in the tcs as a investor and sbi sbi is actually looking to give the loan to the tcs right sbi is looking to give the loan to the tcs then in that case you as a investor and sbi as a lender are they going to look at the same thing are they going to look at the same thing in this case that means you as a investor and sbi both are going to look at the same thing no what the what lens is going to be different for you so that means what investors how investors are going to use and how lender are going to use that any difference guys as a investors what would you what would you look in that case okay let's do it one by one as a investors investors look at the profitability so john uh, the lender is not going to look at the profitability they don't care about the profitability correct but what what will shekhar the lender is going to look lenders look at the liquidity very nice and lenders though also is going to also look at the profitability but uh, but as a investor you will be more keen in looking into the growth of the company that how it is growing in that case even if you are not receiving the dividend that's okay but how the company is actually growing in that case but if i talk about but if i talk about the lender land is obviously looking for safety security of their money in that case the way you are saying correct so that means different people different people have a different perspective of looking at the financial statement also okay guys today's class and today's class and the day after class is going to be a little theoretical uh because we are going to cover the very basics of the fs in that case so so please bear with that uh rest after that is going to be little, little exciting the moment we are done with the theory portion let's see this i am on the first page page number 19 page number 19 module 2 unit 1 the purpose of the income statement the purpose of the income statement is to provide the information about the revenues expenses gains losses associated with the operation of the company during the specified period of time that period is generally a year in that case what is going to be the uses of the income statement the income statement is useful in determining the profitability and the value for the investment purposes as well as the creditworthiness for the prospective lender so we talk about lenders will be looking for the creditworthiness as a investor you will be looking more of a profitability and the investment needs in that case evaluating the profitability provides the insight into the utilization of the company's asset in the creation of the wealth for the shareholders the evaluation of the income statement allows the users to determine the estimate the value of the company as well as the making decisions regarding the long term solvency multi step income statement categorizes and lists the component of the net income in order for the use the the pnl from the operation and from the other ancillary activities in that case. so we are going to look in this case that how you are actually utilizing how you are actually uh, the multi step that means we are, we will discuss what is the multi steps in that case so for example here we are going to look uh, how the profit is going to look like uh, how revenue minus the cogs then the gross profit we'll discuss about that so how the multiple is going to be helpful for us let's see this mm -hmm. in a financial statement guys one we are having operating second we are having non operating what is operating non operating everyone in business in the financial statement we are having operating items 
and we are having non operating items operating you are saying anything which is directly related with your business correct this is not related with your business this is not related to your business any example of the operating guys purchase of the material purchase of material direct expenses correct wages absolutely correct direct expenses any expense any example of the non operating salaries is non operating no salary is operating rent is also operating items come in trading account non operating guys uh, can i say interest is non operating no advertising is also operating interest so uh, no guys advertising is also going to be operating right because you you are actually advertising your products so this is the part of your operations only interest is going to be non operating correct gain on the sale of the investment could also be non operating are we good is that okay john are we good so that's how you can classify the item as operating or non operating okay so guys if i talk about asian paints for asian paints everyone interest income is operating or non operating asian paints you are aware the the company is into the paints it's non operating correct their business is not to earn the income that means even if they are receiving the income they are not going to say no don't give me the income obviously they will receive the income and it is going to be classified as non operating correct but if i talk about hdfc bank for hdfc bank it is going to be operating or non operating for hdfc praveen it is going to be operating or non operating correct for hdfc it is going to be operating yes so by looking at any item guys we are not going to say this is going to be operating or non operating basically what we have to look into that what we have to look into that guys business which line of business you are into it so basically what is the important criteria here is your line of business the category the industry where you are into that line of business is going to be that i hope it is clear everyone okay let's see components of this let's see multi step income statement consists of two categories operating items and the non operating items operating revenues and the expenses are directly related to the primary revenues um primary revenue generating activities of the company so whatever is your primary revenue generating activities in that case non operating revenues expenses gains and the losses are associated with the company's peripheral or the incidental activities and are included in the continuing operations classifying items such as the operating or non operating allows the users to differentiate the recurring uh, earnings and the non recurring earnings recurring items are likely to occur on a regular basis so obviously the name says it recurring everything which is going to happen and occur a lot in that case and can have a more consistent effect on the earnings non recurring are not likely to recur in that case okay let's see everyone service revenue everyone is it going to be uh, service revenue is it going to be o or n is it o or n everyone keep telling me o and i'll keep writing that as you saying it's going to be operating right uh, you are into that line of business you are providing the service and you are actually getting the money why shekar it is going to be operating right interest income it's going to be non operating correct uh, gain on the sale of investment guys again it is going to be non operating your your business is not into the making investment guys but if you are the investment company guy if you are the investment company guys then
correct if you are an investment company then it is going to be operating but right now it does not look like the investment company not operating cost of sales everyone operating selling expenditure everyone selling expenditure but we discussed selling you were saying not selling is going to be guys because this is your business you are making the product you have to sell it also no rishab it is going to be selling operation only why not basically basically we are saying in that case the product you are making you have to sell that also so that is why it is going to be operating is that okay everyone selling expenses operating in that case general and admin expenses everyone operation again operating in that case no praveen it is going to be operating okay i think i i i got the confusion i got the confusion i hope so so confusion is between actually i think i have already discussed in the part 2 how many of you have not done part 2 okay many people have not done it sure 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 in the part 2 i think i have discussed with you the product cost right i have discussed with you the product cost and the period cost uh we'll see if we can discuss it again i'll i'll do it with you in the part 2 so guys there we discussed that there are few items which is related with your manufacturing if related with the manufacturing not related with the manufacturing if it is related with your manufacturing guys we call them product cost no not operating not operating praveen we call it the product expenditure or product cost if it is not related with your expenditure we call it the period expenditure period cost period expenditure is that okay everyone bhavika is that okay now the point is let's classify that guys let's call it let's you can simply call it pr in short you can call it pr in short you can call it p okay everyone i am purchasing any material is it pr or p purchasing material so that i can use it for my manufacturing is it pr or p it's pr it's pr is it operating non operating it's operating very good it's operating labor there is a labor who is actually working on the product so let's say i am into the business of making shirts i am into the business of making shirts so labor who is making the shirt guys and i am paying wages to that labor pr or p pr or p pr it's pr product because that guy is making the the shirt in that case operating non operating it is priya it is going to be operating because my what is my business what is my operation priya my operation is to make the shirt so my my job is to make the shirt sell the shirt and get the money that's my business so obviously anyone who is making my shirt that person is my operation only isn't it is it clear not clear sure antrix uh should i repeat antrix have you done uh, are you aware bit of finance not aware you you have not you are not aware of any accounts of finance okay i asked in the beginning you have not informed me on that okay uh okay no problem no problem basics you understand you have understood this point manufacturing or non manufacturing anything which is manufacturing cost anything which is your manufacturing cost is called the product cost anything which is not related with the manufacturing is known as the period is that okay antriksh is that okay antriksh is that okay
Okay. So here we are classifying that. So I'm saying we are into the business of making the shirt. Any material you are using for making the shirt, any cloth you are using for making the shirt, Antriksh, is it going to be product cost or period cost? That means is it related with your manufacturing or not? It's related with your manufacturing. It is something which is going to be related with your manufacturing, right? If it is related with your manufacturing, that means it is going to be product cost, right? Second, we discuss any labor who is working and it is related again with the manufacturing. That is why it is a product cost. I hope it is clear. Again, it is the part of my operation because it is the operation, right? You're doing the business. That's your operation in that case. Let's say everyone, um, I am doing marketing, let's say on the Amazon to the Amazon, I'm paying commission for the purpose of selling my goods for the purpose of selling my shirt. Is it related with manufacturing Andrik? Everyone, is it related with my manufacturing? No, it is not. No, Rishabh. It is not related with the manufacturing, right? I made the shirt. Now I'm selling it to the Amazon and I'm selling it to the to, via Amazon. I'm paying the commission to Amazon in that case. It is not related with my manufacturing, right? If it is not related, can I say it is PR? Is it product then? Not related with the manufacturing, then it is going to be P. Correct. Good, John. It should be P. Are we good, everyone? But selling it, selling your product, is it your operations or not? Selling any product, is it your operations or not? Yes, that's my operation. That is going to be my operation because that's my operation. Eventually, I'm, my operation is not only to manufacture it. My operation is to manufacture it, market it, sell it, deliver it, receive the money. Entire thing is going to be manufacturing. So guys, I hope the difference is clear because people have a confusion. In the selling expenditures, many people were saying initially that it is going to be non-operational. It is going to be operational, guys, but it is going to be period cost. I hope it is clear, everyone. Priya, is that okay? Praveen? Okay. Let's go back here again. Uh, so that's why that's why selling expenditure is going to be operating, guys. So if I just talk about here, this is going to be period expenditure, but it is going to be operational. Similarly, general and admin is going to be period expenditure, but it is going to be operational. Interest expenditure, guys. Interest expenditure, period of interest expenditure, operational, non-operational. Absolutely, non-operational. Period of product. I think you can tell this also now. Absolutely P in that case because it is P in that case because it is not related with the manufacturing in that case. It should be P. Research and development, everyone. Research. Research is related with my, actually the research is related with my business or not? Yes. I want to research that how can I make the best quality shirt in that case. That research is related with the operation. It is going to be O in that case. R&D is not a manufacturing. It is not a manufacturing because we are not looking for the actual manufacturing. We are looking for the actual manufacturing cost. I hope it is okay, everyone. Antriksh, any doubt, please ask. I'll go a little slow, but if you have any ask question, keep asking it or rather I'll keep last 10, 15 minutes for you. If you have any queries, I'll specifically address only to you last 15 minutes if you have. Okay. But keep reading because gradually the level of the CMA is going to be very difficult. Uh, so try to read a lot of stuff, right? You get a week. Um, in the week, start reading, not necessarily the coming chapters. You don't need to, anyone need, no need to read the, the chapter. We are going to read it. Absolutely no need to read that. But Antrish, since you are not coming from the background, just understand the basic finance. See the how the PNN looks like, how the balance sheet looks like. Do the basic of the accounts because this is something I'm going to use it a lot going forward. 
So just just gear up with that, okay? And if you have any problem, let me know. Now, income statement presentation. Again, income statement that means the P and L presentation. Income statement reports the operating revenues and the expenses separately from the non-operating. In that case, why are we reporting it separately, guys? Operating and non-operating. What is the rationale of that? Why are we doing that? Why are we segregating operational and non-operational? To know the gross profit. To take what decision, uh, Praveen? to know the gross profit and net profit no john to have a better control over the cost no no parminder we are looking from the shareholder perspective we are looking from the outsider perspective company knows everything why the company is going to be bothered about that so guys hear me out let's say this is company a this is company b both are having a profit of 100 100 which is a better company both are same. So you can't say anything. Both are same, right? Okay. Operational income of A is $90. Non-operational income of A is $10. Operational income of B is $40. Non-operational income of B is $60. Which is a better company? Which is a better company, everyone? A is a better company. Why A is a better company? Because whatever is your core business, whatever is your core business, you are generating profit from that, right? Something which is very frequent. For example, my business is to make the shirts. That means I should earn maximum profits from making the shirt. If I'm earning, let's say, interest in one year, my one year is very good because I earned a lot of interest. Is that relevant? Is that relevant for you? No. You are investing in my company. You are going to invest in any company. Let's say, let's say you are investing in Zomato. You are going to invest in the Zomato because they are into the delivery model. They are into the food delivery model in that case. You don't care about that the Zomato is earning very good interest in that case. You don't care about that. Maybe one year the interest amount is very good or maybe one year the dividend amount is good, but you're not looking for that. You are looking in that case that whether the delivery food model is actually giving the good gains or not. So we are obviously looking for the core in that case. That's a whole rational, guys. We are segregating the operational and non-operation because we want the operational income to be high. Okay, let's see. Uh, so income statement reports the operating revenues and the expenses separately from the non-operating revenues and the expenses um, and other gains and the losses. The multiple step um, income statement presents the major subtotal such as the gross profit, operating income, income PVT before that. So how we are showing this, guys, we are going to show it um, sales. First of all, sales will come. From sales, we are going to reduce COGS. Guys, COGS includes all the manufacturing. So I can say COGS is nothing but my product cost because it includes all the manufacturing expenditure. So sales minus COGS is going to give you gross profit. It is going to give you gross profit in that case, guys. So I'm making it broadly here. Sales minus COGS, you will get gross profit. From gross profit, I'm going to reduce SGNA. Selling general and admin expenditure, any kind of a sale you are doing, commission you are paying, uh, marketing you are doing in that case, rent you are paying in that case, or everything is going to come under the SGNA. Are we good? From this, we are going to get EBITDA. What is EBITDA, everyone? Earnings before interest, depreciation, tax, and amortization. Or rather, you can say amortization and tax. Amortization and tax. From EBITDA, what do you reduce? From EBITDA, we are going to reduce depreciation. We will get 
correct? We are going to get um, EBIT, earnings before interest and tax. From that, you are going to reduce interest. We will get PBT, profit before tax. From this, we are going to reduce tax and we will arrive at PET. Okay, correct, EAT or PBT. What is the rationale of breaking like that? Why are we breaking like that? Why break up like that? Transparency, very good point. You're giving transparency, good point. Any other point, guys? As a shareholder, what is your advantage? As a shareholder, what is your advantage? So everyone, let's see. We discuss sales. Um, how many steps we discuss? We discuss gross profit. We discuss EBITDA. We discuss EBIT. We discuss PBT. We discuss PAT. These are the multiple breakup we have done of the profits in that case. Let's say there are two companies, A or B. This is 1,000. This is... Uh, minus 300 and uh, this is coming uh, 400 this is coming 300 this is coming 100 and this is coming minus 300 okay let's say this is also minus this is also minus 300 here uh, this is coming minus 300 this is coming minus 400 minus okay let's keep it same let's keep it symmetry as same this is also coming minus 300 let's say this is also coming minus 300 pbt level both are coming minus 300 minus 300 in that case guys i have a question here guys which company is better a or b or they are both same question is guys which is better and why why or they are same no this is not revenue this is gross profit everyone this is gross profit Very good point. You're saying A is better because at least, at least at the gross margin level, at the gross profit level, you are making profit, right? That means at least you are, I can say the other way around, guys. That means at least you are recovering your manufacturing cost. At least you are recovering your manufacturing cost. In this guy, this guy, this guy is not even recovering their manufacturing cost in that case. That means whatever the product they are making, they are not even able to sell at that cost in that case. Hence, in this case, A is a better company. That is a whole rationale of breaking it down, guys, so that we get to know that at what level, if you are having the losses also, at what level are you actually having the losses? If you are having the losses at gross profit level, EBT level or EPT level, so that I get to know the sense of the cost, that which cost is actually problem in the company. Is the manufacturing cost is a problem? Is the marketing cost is a problem? Is the interest cost a problem in that case? We'll get to know that automatically in that case. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, no, maybe. Should I repeat this? Okay. So for example, guys, if I talk about any startup, right? If I talk about majority of the startup, let's say if I talk about Paytm, let's say, what is the problem with most of the startups is that their gross profit is also negative. 
imagine when the gross profit is negative the ebit is going to be negative again the pvt is going to be negative and the obviously the pat is going to be negative in that case that's a major problem with all the startups in that case why the why it is negative guys why it is negative because sales are higher no 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 manish sales are very higher the point is they are giving so much huge discount they are giving so much of a discount in that case because of which their cost is very high that is why the gross profit is very lower in that case again their ebit is also very negative why because they are doing a lot of marketing because their marketing cost is very high is that okay everyone for example if i give you the example of a coke coke gross profit very high but ebit very low why correct selling marketing is very high cost of making the coke is nothing is just a is just a sugary water is just a sugar water how much the sugar water is going to cost you so cost of manufacturing is very low it is low guys sales is good because of which the gross profit will go up but why the abit is going down abit is going down because your marketing cost is very high you are hiring all the celebrities in that case and because of that the marketing cost is going to be high because of which abit is lower is that okay everyone okay if i talk about companies who have taken a high debt companies who have taken a lot of debt their gross profit is going to be higher abit is going to be higher but pbt is going to be very low for example if i talk about the companies of any adani uh, any anil ambani companies let's say reliance power because they have taken so much of a debt they have taken so much of a debt guys because of which interest is going to be higher and because of which interest is higher that means pbt is going to be lower is that okay everyone any doubt guys feel free to ask i'm um, if you are reading it for the first time i know first time it is going to be a little tricky okay i'm going a little step down because it is not mentioned in your book so it's better to to keep interacting with these things so that you will register it much better the why are we doing everything in that case okay so we have done this operating everything we have done it it is the multiple step guys it is the income presentation it is basically the multiple step in that what is single step guys here you are doing nothing here simply sing, single step is basically you are saying this is my revenue this is my expenditure and this is going to be my pbt simple that means you are merging everything what is the problem of merging everything my analysis is not going to be that well in that case our analysis is going to be distorted with that case okay up till here do we have any questions guys feel free to ask no okay limitation of the income statement management has the ability to change the reported income through the use of the assumptions and the estimate we are looking the limitations of the income statement that means we are looking simple terms what are the problems of the pnl anything which comes to your mind guys that these are the problems with the pnl statement anything which comes to your mind estimates very good point can you just elaborate more problems of the pnl for example if i talk about two companies right both have taken the same asset they purchased same asset same exactly same quality of the fixed assets they have purchased which is let's say 10000 dollars 10000 dollars their profit is also their their abita let's say their abita is also same let's say 1000 dollars 1000 dollars now both the companies are looking good to me there is no problem in that case but let's say company b company b charges a depreciation let's say 20% company a charges a depreciation 
ten percent. That means what is going to be my EBIT, everyone? So here, my what is going to be my depreciation in that case? Depreciation here is going to be ten percent into ten thousand. That means how much? One thousand. How much? It, okay, I think it's such a high value. Okay, let's make it five thousand. Five thousand. Five thousand. So one thousand is going to be the depreciation. How much is going to be the depreciation here, everyone? Two thousand. Is that okay, everyone? How I'm calculating this? Hopefully. Okay. So this is the depreciation. That means what is going to be my EBIT, everyone? EBIT here is going to be four thousand and three thousand. So if I don't give you anything, guys, if I don't give you any information, if I tell you these are the two companies, EBIT of the company A is four thousand, EBIT of the company B is three thousand. Obviously, you are going to pick the company A in that case. Yes, you say okay. This is a great company. It is having such a profit, higher profit in that case. But is it actually the higher profits, guys? Is it actually the higher profits? No. Just because you have followed the different depreciation policies in that case, just because you have followed the different depreciation policies in that case, your analysis as an investor, my analysis could be different in that case. In that case, I might actually invest in the company A. Without thinking that actually company A and B are exactly the same, there is no change in that case. It's just like it is just the accounting entry. Nothing else. Depreciation is nothing. It's just the accounting entry in that case. Hence, my analysis could be distorted. This is the problem with the with the PNL that you can take a lot of assumptions. You can take a lot of assumptions. You can take a lot of assumption and the estimates. The way Manish is saying, for example, I can charge the depreciation method. I can have a different. Uh, Uh, provision for bad debts. I can charge a different method in that case. So different assumptions you are taking because of that. You can manipulate your earnings also. Let's see. Management has the ability to change the reported income through the use of the assumptions and the estimates. Assumptions and the estimates are utilized to account for the items such as depreciation, warranty cost, allowances for the bad debts, so provision also in that case. For example, depreciation involves the allocation of the cost over a period of benefit. The appropriate useful life, salvage value, method of the depreciation are determined by the management based on the estimate regarding the use of the asset. So you can decide that what should be my depreciation method, how many years I'm going to use this, what should be the selling price in that case. All of it is going to Make and change everything in that case. I'll discuss every item one by one when whenever we are moving to the asset in that case. So don't worry on that. Estimates must be made uh, and accounting for at point of sale for a future warranty associated with the inventory sold. Credit sales may result in the bad debts if the customer do not pay the time in that case. I'm sure you must aware what is the bad debts. Bad debts obviously happens whenever you are making the credit sales in that case. Allowances must be made by the management based on the evaluation of the receivables for the risk in that case. Each of the items indicated create the uncertainties and therefore requires the management to calculate the estimate of that also. Subjective nature of the items evaluated results in the increased risk of the manipulation of the assumption and the estimates used in that case. Very basic, guys. I'm going to move that. Mm. Okay, we are creating the, we are making the uh, PNL in that case. We are making the profit and loss income statement from this. Let's make this, uh, and we are following the multi-step. Yeah, let's do the multi-step in that case. Sales revenue is going to be the income. From income, I'm going to reduce the sales return, sales discount. So this is add, this is minus, this is minus. Service revenue is going to be added. Rental revenue. That means you have given your property on rent. It is going to be rental revenue in that case. COGS is going to be reduced. Cost of services sold is going to be reduced. Rental income, cost of rental income is going to be reduced in that case. Salary expense is going to be reduced, guys. Freight out, freight out is also going to be reduced. Freight out, everyone. Freight out is a product cost or is it a pre-rated cost? What do you think? Freight out is it a product or is it period? It's period, right? It's period because it is not related with the manufacturing 
you are selling the material and then the material is going in that case it is the freight out cost in that case correct um, so this is all the expenses all are going to be expensive and you're going to claim that okay um i think i'll move guys i'll cover it is very very boring stuff um mm, 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 mm. okay i'll move in the balance sheet everyone in the balance sheet what comes in the balance sheet comes share capital and the liabilities here comes assets assets could be long term it could be short term long term means anything which you are expecting to give you the benefit for more than how many months how many months it is going to give you the benefit 12 months right 12 months similarly everyone the liability is going to be two it is going to be long term it is going to be short term long term means you are going to repay the liability within more than 12 months anything which you are going to repay within a span of 12 months in that case okay let's say you guys you are doing a business you are doing a business of uh, of making furniture what all you need for making the furniture you need uh, machinery plant and machinery what else you need wood fabricol machine absolutely wood fabricol labor absolutely um you need building also right where are you going to keep the material otherwise so you need building also right um what else from your factory you are going to take it to the showroom right so you need the vehicle for that also correct but from where you are going to get the money guys from where you are going to get the money you will utilize your savings you will take the money from your family family and friends um if nothing works out you go to bank and take a loan also correct this side is known as sources sources of funds that means how you are going to source the money how you are going to source the funds in that case what is this side called guys application right application of funds in that case correct sources and the application if you see these items guys vehicle plant and machinery building is it short term is it long term it's long term long term how about this wood fabricol nails you are taking is it short term long term it short term similarly here also source is also going to be long term it could be short term so i'm just rechanging that source is also guys could be long term it could be short term similarly applications everyone it could be long term it could be short term are we good is that okay everyone okay ideally guys ideally long term should fund long term that means you are raising the long term money you should buy the long term property with that short term should fund short term that means for the matching again a basic matching principle all right sometimes what could happen guys that long term is also funding short term it could sometime also happens in that case but what should not happen guys is this that the short term is funding the long term liabilities long term assets 
Why so? Why should it not happen? Anyone, why should not happen? Working capital? What is working capital? My question is, why the short-term sources of the funds? Question is, why the short-term sources of funds should not be utilized for the long-term application? That's a question. Short-term sources will be exhausted soon. Returns late, ROI will be delayed. No, Manish, it is not with the ROI. Yes, Bhavika, to some extent you're asking, right? For example, guys, what does that mean? That means you go to you go to SBI and take a loan for six months. At the rate ten percent, you have taken let's say uh, ten thousand dollars. Is it short term or long term, everyone? Everyone, short term, long term. This loan which you have taken from SBI, it's short term, absolutely. Because the duration is six months, right? It is short term. You have taken $10,000 in that case. Now with that money, what you have done, you have purchased a showroom. You are looking to, to set up your uh, showroom. In that case, you purchase the showroom. Showroom is a long term or short term, everyone? Short term, long term should be long term right no one set up for for in that case long term so what has happened guys short term money has gone into the long term which is a big no no which should not happen in that case why what is the problem in that case because sbi is going to come after 6 months you have taken the loan on 1st of january 2020 sbi will come to you on 30th june that give me my money but do you have the money right now no because you have already parked everything in the long term. You have purchased the showroom in that case. In that case, you will have a financial crunch in that case. Since you have a financial crunch in that case, you will have no choice but to sell the showroom. It's a really bad business decision because the whole idea of having the showroom to be the long term, but just because you are having the short term crunch in that case, you will tend to sell your long term assets in that case. Is that clear, everyone? Why it should not happen? Or second option is that you are going to request the SBI that I'm going to defer you the payment. I don't have the money. Please come after six months, after 12 months. Please come after that. But if you are having the mismatch like that, that means short term money you are utilizing for purchasing long term asset. In that case, the chances of the solvency is going to be insolvency is going to be really high in that case. Is that okay, everyone? Perfect. I'll move up till now, guys. Any questions? Anything you want me to repeat? If not clear, no, okay. I'll move to something very interesting. Um, uh, let's move something very interesting in that case, which is cash flow statement. Cash flow statement, CFS, cash flow statement. Everyone, cash flow statement, is it for one point of time? Is it for one day? Or is it for the full year? Full period or full year? It is for the full year, right? Why, Praveen, it can be both? Cash flow balance. Cash flow balance, that means how much cash you are having. This is going to be one day, right? This is going to be one day, that how much cash you are having in that case. But if I talk to you, cash flow, what is the meaning of cash flow? That means how much money you have received during the year, how much payment you have done in that case. That is for the year in that case. Is that okay? 
for example in your case right let's say you are having the 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 balance with you are having the bank account with the hdfc if the hdfc is giving you the statement does the hdfc give you the statement only for one day no that gives you the annual statement right because that shows how much you have purchased how much amount is received how much amount you have received how much you have gone so that's a full year but at the end of the statement you will find the closing balance that closing balance shows the position last date so whenever it is the scenario of a balance it is one date but whenever it is the flow it is for the full year i hope it is clear okay i'll i'll start with very very basic so antrik if you have any questions let me know i'll i'll uh, hopefully that will address a lot of things uh, the rest you can uh, read later cash flow statement guys how many activities are there in the cash flow statement cash flow statement out of all the out of all the statement guys pnl balance sheet cash flow statement statement of the statement of changes in the activity this is the most important cash flow statement most important why so because eventually why are you doing the business why eventually anyone is doing the business obviously the point is to earn the profit definitely you want to earn the profit first of all obviously i hope no one is doing the business for doing the losses right everyone is doing the business for earning the profits but is the earning profits in the book is sufficient no we want to receive the cash also eventually isn't it if i'm telling you your book profit is let's say 10 lakh crores but cash is zero absolutely rubbish point in that case it has no meaning in that case eventually your profit should be converted into the cash also that is why the cash flow statement is the most important statement that's why whenever we are looking to invest in a company we always look for the free cash flow that means company's cash flow how much it is generating the cash flows in that case right for example if i look into the company like let's say sbi sbi big company giant largest banker of the country right let's say they have given the loan to so many people when you give the loan that is your income you earn the income in that case because your income is very high the profit will look very high in that case but let's say profit is looking very high but then it comes out to be nirav modi then it turns out to be vijay malya then it turns out to be anil ambani people who are not giving you the money so is the cash flow coming to you no so there is no point of doing that ideally you should have not only the profits you should have the cash flow also because later on eventually if they are not giving you the money you have to book the losses so maybe the profit might looks momentary it might look higher but when you are eventually no one is giving you the money in that case you have to book the losses and eventually it is going to be a big setback for the business is that point clear everyone that is why cash flow is a very 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 important statement for us okay cash flow statement is having three activities forget about activities understand in a very simple terms what is activity that means these are the three buckets guys three buckets we are having three buckets we are having in that case right for example if i talk about your bank statement in the bank statement during the year they you have so many transactions right maybe one of the transaction is you have received the salary maybe you have received bank gives you some interest also you have invested somewhere and you are receiving the dividend also in that case maybe your 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 friends your 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 family members have given you the gift also so in that case in the bank statement what is a cash flow statement cash flow statement or activities are is a very simple point whatever is your bank statement i'm going to break your bank statement i'm going to break the bank statement into categories like that that's it that's what the cash flow statement is so that means how we are going to allocate this guys what are the activities operating 
that means whatever the money which is coming regarding the business regarding the operations whatever the money is coming we will put that into the bucket that this is from the operation which is coming second is going to be investing that means whatever is the money is coming because you are either making the investment or you are withdrawing the money in that case that's investing third bucket is going to be everyone what is the third bucket financing right financing that means if you are taking any loan if the equity is coming in that case that's the third bucket in that case financing in that case i hope the bucket point is clear antriksh i hope it is clear very basic i'm doing it yes no maybe okay now everyone if i'm saying the company is receiving any money if you are receiving anything this is obviously going to be cash inflow whenever you are making any payment this would be cash outflow right cash inflow whatever is coming whatever you are paying is going to be cash outflow simple easy peasy let's say company is paying salary guys company is paying salary ci or co antriksh ci or co very nice co cash outflow in that case cash outflow okay three activities we have done guys let's call it let's call it oa operating activities let's call it ia let's call it fa oa ia fa operational investing financing oa ia fa what is this oa ia fa correct that's your operation when you're doing when you're paying the salary to anyone it is oa absolutely correct in that case um you are you are selling the investment everyone you are selling investment coci cash inflow it's a cash inflow ci no pravin selling investment whenever you selling the investment money is coming absolutely correct um oa ia fa correct it is going to be ia it should be ia is that okay antriksh are we good okay financing what kind of stuff is coming under the financing anything which is related with your capital structure that means debt equity anything which is related with that is going to come under the fi financing fa sorry financing activity it could be debt it could be equity it could be preferential capital anyone it could be anything which is related with your capital structure what is capital structure antriksh in that case that means how you are receiving the money right so for example how you are actually funding your showroom of the furniture business how you are actually funding you basically anything related with your sources is going to be fa it is going to be financing activities in that case okay company is taking a loan company is taking a loan everyone ci or co ci or co ci correct which activity is that going to be loan if it is loan it is going to be fa absolutely correct company is issuing the shares ci or co or nothing cash inflow brilliant because you are receiving cash very nice which activity is that 
it is going to be no Praveen, it is going to be FA. Okay. Company is purchasing investment. CICO. CO. Correct. Which activity? I. It should be I in that. I hope it is clear. Okay, let's move. Uh, components and classification, I am on page number 41. Statement of the cash flows. Statement of the cash flows include the three major sections, operating, investing, financing. Uh, I'll talk about the non-cash also. O operating activities, everyone. The operating activity sections relate to the transaction involved in the production of the goods, delivery of the service to the customer. So anything which is going to be related with your business, with your basically operations. Operating activities consist of the cash receipts, disbursement from the transaction, reporting on the income statement, and related with the current assets and the liabilities. We'll talk about that also. Examples include sale of product. So, for example, if you're making the sale and you're receiving the money, uh, payment to the employees, inventory purchase, payment and receipt of the interest in that case, purchase and the sale of the trading securities. We'll talk about the trading securities also. Payment of the accounts payables, receipt of the accounts receivables in that case. So, all of it is going to be operating activities. Investing activity, everyone. Making loans to other entities, that means you are giving the loan to anyone. Very interesting point in that case, you are giving the loan everyone. That means company is giving the loan to another company. Company one is giving the loan to company two. If I'm making the balance sheet of company one, where this loan of $10,000 will come? Left or right? That means, is it liability or asset? Is it liability? You're saying, right? It is asset. Absolutely. It is asset. No, it's an asset, uh, Parminder. You have given the loan in that case, right? Whenever you are giving the loan, whenever you are giving the loan, is it is it your capital structure? Is it the part of your capital structure? No. It is not a part of your capital structure. If it is not a part of your capital structure, would it come under FA? No, that will not come under the FA. This is going to be IA. I hope this point is clear, everyone. So that means everyone, this is the company. If the company is taking the loan, you are taking the loan, then it is going to be FA. But if the company is giving the loan, this is going to be IA. I hope this point is clear, everyone. This is cash inflow. This is cash outflow. Difference is clear, everyone. This is your liability. This is your asset. Let's see. Making loans to the other entities, as we discussed, it is cash outflow and it is going to be IA, investing activities. Purchasing or disposing of trading securities available for the uh, sale securities and the HTM. I'm going to talk about all the three categories, but basically in a very simple terms, any investment which you are purchasing or selling is going to come here in that case. Uh, Antrik on page number 41. acquiring or disposing of, of the property. So that means if you are purchasing any of the fixed assets, any of the asset you're purchasing or selling in that case, again, it is going to be, um, again, purchase or sale of the investment is going to be IA. Acquiring any entity. So that means if you're acquiring any other company in that case, that is going to be again IA. What is FA everyone? FA is going to be issue of the bonds, notes, borrowings, payment of the principal in that case. Uh, you are issuing the stock in that case. 
uh, you are making the cash dividend payment. That means you are paying the dividend in that case. Whenever you are paying the dividend in this case, again, the payment of the dividend is going to be FA. Payment of the dividend is going to be FA in that case. Is that okay, everyone? Are we good? This is the company, everyone. Company issues preference share capital. So these are the preference share holders. Company issue, issued preference share capital and company receives the cash. Year is 2020. Cash inflow, cash outflow. CICO. Correct, John, CI. Which activity is that? IA, FA, OA? It is FA. It is going to be FA in that case. Correct. Okay. Company is supposed to repay these guys in 2025, but company does not have a cash. So company says, I don't have a cash, but I'm going to give you equity share capital. So these preference shareholders, they have given their preference share capital shares to the company and the company has issued the equity share capital in the year 2025. First of all, everyone, which activity is that? IA, FA, OA. IA, OA, FA. FA, non-cash. FA. Correct. It is not going to be FA, guys. Because are you in 2025, guys? Are you actually any cash is going out, everyone? Praveen, is any cash going out in, in 2025? No. Is any cash coming to you? Is any cash coming or going in that case? No. Nothing is happening. No cash is coming. No cash is going. Whenever, guys, there is no movement of the cash, whenever there is no movement of the cash, we are going to not classify that under any of the category. This is going to be non-cash category. Is that point clear? Everyone, it is not going to be under any of the category. Though the nature is very much like a FA. Nature is again very much like a FA because you are issuing the stock. Right, you are redeeming the stock in that case. The nature is very much like a FA, but we are not going to classify that as a FA. It is going to be non-cash. Perfect. Very good, guys. Okay. Company. Company is purchasing the asset, but company gives the does not have the cash. Company gives the equity shareholder to the suppliers. Which activity is that? IA, IA. Think, think. See that. Purchase of the asset, IA or FA, which activity is that? You purchase the asset, but instead of the cash, you have given the equity share capital. My point is, which activity is that? Again, very nice. It is going to be non-cash because again, no cash is going, guys. No cash is going. No cash is going, no cash is coming in that case. That means non-cash in that case, right? Correct. It is not going to be the part of the form uh, cash flow statement. It is going to be a separate schedule for that. You are going to have a separate schedule for that. It is more informational in that case. It is something which is going to be more informational in that case. So that you get to know what are the other transactions which are happening because the non-cash in that case. I hope it is clear, everyone. Okay, let's move. So here we are having significant non-cash investing and the financing activities. Information about the material non-cash investing and the financing activities that do not result in the cash receipt or the payments is provided separately in a supplemental disclosures. Any part of the transaction that involves the cash would be included in the 
cash flow statement of the cash flows. So anything, obviously, it is related with the cash. It is going to be SCF. That means the statement of the cash flow. Otherwise, not. What are the examples in this case? Issuance of the stock to purchase the IA. So to purchase the fixed assets, non-cash. We have done this. Conversion of the bonds to the equity. We have done the conversion of the preference. But here also, again, non-cash. Acquisition of the asset through the increments of the lease. That means you have taken it on the lease. Till the time you are not making the payment in that case, it is going to be non-cash item. Exchange of one non-cash asset, again, the non-cash asset in that case. So what does that mean? That means if you are having the asset, let's say the company is having car, company gives the car and company takes the machinery. That means barter, you're doing the barter. Is this going to come under anything? No, again, non-cash. Um, okay, let's see this now. Everyone, let's do it one by one. First activity, keep seeing and tell me what is the answer. First activity, everyone, issuance of the common stock. IA, OA, FA. I'll write whatever you say. Whatever the majority will say, I'll write that. Antriksh, what should be the answer? FA, very good. Because it is related with the capital structure, it is going to be FA. How about second, everyone? It is not going to be OA, it is going to be IA because selling land is not your business. Your business is could be different. Uh, generally, the selling land is not the business in that case, uh, unless you are obviously the, the real estate broker or something. That's why it is going to be IA. That means obviously you are using it for your business purpose, that land in that case, and it is your investment. It is the purchase of the asset in that case. That's why IA. Guys, quickly, one or two more points in that case. Uh, okay, keep doing that. Forget about this. Accounts receivable increased by 120. Accounts receivable means that anyone from with whom you have to take the money. Correct. That means your customer. Customer is business. Whenever it is business, that means way. Correct. How about this? Purchase of the machinery for 750. Mm, purchase of the machinery, is it related with the capital structure, Praveen? No. Correct. It should be I. Any purchase, guys, purchase of the machinery, purchase or sell of the machinery, purchase on sale of any asset or the investment, guys, that would be I. Now, another view for the people could be that. It, it is the part of the business, then I should be, it, it should be as the part of OA. No, we are having a separate category for that. Any item which we are purchasing, any fixed assets we, we are purchasing or selling, any investment we are, we are purchasing or selling, we will categorize that in the IA, not OA. All right, Shekhar. John, are we good? How about fifth point? Okay, you are selling bond. Guys, when you are selling the bond, is it your investment? When you're selling the bond, is it your investment or capital structure? It is not your investment. It is not your investment. When you, 
um, sold in that case who understood that point understood your point also i understood your point so people who, i think people who are saying ia they are assuming in the past you have purchased this and then you are selling it is that what you are taking the assumption yeah uh, but honestly if the the question is written like that you are selling at the face value then that looks like that you are issuing the bonds that means it looks like that you are issuing the bond and whenever it is the issued that means your company's bond you are issuing in that case then it looks like more of a capital structure related that means fa okay now next points accounts receivable bond selling is boring absolutely shaker accounts payable that means my supplier the supplier is going to be oa you right supplier is going to be oa short term notes payable everyone is it not going to be fa okay here it's a little tricky because if it is related with the business right if it is related with the temporary trade creditors then it could be oa or it could be fa let's see what assumption they have taken how about purchase of the treasury stock what is treasury stock guys we understand what is treasury stock what is treasury stock everyone so this is the company guys buyback right buy bought shares basically right so guys company has issued company has issued let's say 1000 shares right don't worry guys we have done it in the part 2 but i'll quickly cover here company has issued let's say the paytm has come with the ipo and the paytm has issued in the market 1000 stock after point of time the ipo was not really well and the paytm is has let's say purchased uh 30 stocks from the market purchase back buy back in india we call it buy back that means how much is the outstanding shares in the market guys pravin how many are the outstanding that means in the market how many shares are there correct 970 is the outstanding shares in that case right these 30 stocks guys which you purchased this is known as treasury stock this is known as treasury stock that means whatever you are purchasing from the market is known as treasury stock so guys whenever you are purchasing back your stock is it cash inflow or cash outflow first of all cash outflow right because you have to give the money you have to give the money only then people are going to give you the stock in that case which activity is that ia oa fa correct it's related with your capital structure and if it is related with the capital structure it should be fa correct so purchase of the treasury is fa very nice how about this Ninth point. Correct. It's a non-cash item. Non-cash item in that case. Declared dividend, everyone. Dividend declared. No dividend. Your money is going, uh, Praveen. actually the cash dividend is going in that case okay my bad it says the declared no 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 my bad declared then it could be non cash you right yeah it could be non cash understand the difference guys one is the company is going to declare right so it's not going to be the case that moment the company is going to declare they immediately they are going to pay there is generally there is a gap in that case so that means if the company has declared maybe let's say on 1st of august it might take almost 15 20 days or a month also so maybe they are actually paying it on the 1st of september 
So declaration is not a cash outflow. When you declare, is the cash outflow happening there? No, cash outflow will happen here. That's why it could be non-cash. Is that clear, everyone? Parminder, is that okay? But if the question says they have cash dividend paid, if the question says cash dividend paid, then it is going to be FA. Then it is going to be FA in that case. Let's see. Mm, yeah, they have not considered, not included because dividend will appear once it is paid. So whenever you are paying it, then it is going to come in that case, right? Correct. I hope it is clear, everyone. Okay, let's see the limitations of that. What is the limitation of the statement of the cash flow is that it is prepared using the cash basis. That means which does not match with the revenue with the expenses. What does that mean? It means basically, guys, it is pure and pure cash flow. So point what they're saying is, is your pet and your whatever the prop, whatever the cash flow you are generating from your operations. That means from OA. Is it going to match everyone? Is your profit after taxes, which is basically the PNL item, and your cash flow from the operations, right? Is it going to match? No. It's not going to match. Why it is not going to match? It will not match. Reason being, guys, whenever I'm calculating in the PNL, whatever item we consider, we consider the accrual basis. We consider the accrual basis. We follow accrual basis. That means we are booking the sales. Do you book the credit sales here or not, guys? Everyone, do you book the credit sales in the PNL? Yes. So let's say here the credit sales is $10,000. That means for which let's say money has not arrived. For this 10,000 money has not arrived during the year in that case. Will that $10,000 will come under the OA? If for this $10,000 you have not received the cash yet. Correct. It is not going to come. This $10,000 is not going to come under the cash flow statement. Because in the cash flow statement, we only consider pure and pure cash item in that case. When it is not coming, when it is not coming, obviously the PNL and this is not going to match. I hope it is clear. Everyone, John, are we good? Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, limitation of the statement of cash flow, it is prepared using the cash basis, which does not match the revenues with the expenses used to generate those expenses as effectively as an accrual based accounting systems in that case. To overcome this limitation, it is important to analyze the statement of the cash flow along with the balance sheet and income statement to present a clearer picture of the operating results in that case. So here we need to understand not only the PNL, but also the cash flow statement so that you understand how the company is doing the business in that case. Another limitation is the extent to which the management decisions are not fully reflected in the cash flow statement in that case. Um, for example, waiting to pay the vendors for the credit purchase instead of the paying earlier and potentially receiving a discount on the cash flow from the operation in the short term, but may be harmful in the future in that case. What does that mean in this case? It means, guys, that... Uh, This is, you have purchased, the company has purchased from the supplier any item for $10,000. $10,000 you have purchased in that case. Um, okay. You are, you, are, you are supposed to make the payment to the supplier. You are supposed to make the payment to the supplier in that case. In this case, maybe the supplier is giving you discount, but you're not taking the discount because your cash flow might get impacted because whenever you're making the payment in that case. But if you take that discount, is it not beneficial for the company, everyone? Is it not beneficial for the company if, the, if you take the discount? 
for example for example everyone let's say let's say you are looking to buy a mobile phone you are looking to buy a mobile phone you are looking the mobile from from the amazon amazon is giving you a mobile phone for $15000 if you pay amazon lump sum that means in one time if you pay the amazon amazon says don't pay me $15000 pay me 14500 14500 in that case so in this case guys paying you in one go is beneficial or not yes it is going to be beneficial in that case but maybe you are taking care of your cash flows maybe you don't have the cash flows at point of time or maybe you are trying to save the cash in that case then you will not pay one time you might take the emi option if emi option you are taking in that case to conserve the cash in that case maybe you have to pay let's say 15500 so it is automatically not going to be reflected in the cash flow statement what is happening into the pnl statement is that point clear everyone similarly here also the impact of the discount may not be exactly 100 100% understood by looking at the cash flow statement also okay preparation of the cash flow statement i will do after the break maybe uh i think let's try few mcqs guys um we will understand better with that maybe and then i'm going to move to that it is for the first topic guys and uh, so let's do all the mcqs for that at least what should be the answer the financial statements that provides a summary of the firm's operation for a period of that time is what is statement of financial position everyone balance sheet statement of financial position is balance sheet correct you are saying a should be the answer correct very good which of the following defines equity as relates to business entity equity is going to be asset minus the liability correct guys if you face any problem let me know uh, i think this is basic but if you have any doubt let me know under the royalty agreement with another company the the company pays the royalty for the assignment of a patent for 3 years the royalty should be reported as expense in the period which you have incurred correct
not clear let's see uh, on um, so i got a i got d d okay let's see on july 15 the company entered into the three month agreement to rent a machinery the company needed to complete a special order okay so you have taken any machinery on rent any good special order you receive in that case the machinery would be delivered on the 1st of august you place the order you you made an agreement on 15 july and it is delivered to you on the 1st of august the rental payments are due on the first day of each rental month the effect of this event would have the company's financial would be so you are saying it is going to increase the liability decrease the income why it is going to increase the liability guys first of all why decrease the income let's say d in that case are you paying on 15th of july have you made the payment guys no no you have not the made the payment on 31st july so when you have not made the payment you will not decrease the income in that case so d is not the answer because no payment change is going to happen in that case right nothing is happening actually nothing is happening on the 31st july in that case no change in the assets liability or the income in that case correct should be a Okay, the company prepares the documents at the end of the accounting period after adjusting all the entries in that case. Document proves that the total debits are equal to the total credit and is used to preparation for the balance sheet. This statement is known as um, correct adjusted trial balance, which is known as adjusted trial balance. That means you have adjusted the trial balance in that, correct? Correct. So I think you should read this. You will understand better with this. We are looking post closing trial balance, guys. Post closing trial balance. We are talking about in that case. Post closing, basically the balance of all accounts before adjusting are recording. Before it is adjusting is recorded, it is known as unadjusted. So C is not the answer. 
I think once you read this, you will understand this. It is not the unadjusted is going to be C in that case. So I'm leaving this for the time being. I'm leaving it for the time being. You will read this. You will understand that better. But generally, it is going to be the permanent account with their balances. But I think once you read this, you will understand this. It should be A, but uh, read then attempt again in that case. Should be A. But I don't think any question related with the trial balance would be the part of the CMA as, as this is the optional topic only. So, so you can skip that also, but read it once just like a miscellaneous reading. Approvals and deference. Accrual accounting involves the accruals and deference. Okay. Which of the following best describes the accruals and deferrals? Accruals and deferrals are concerned with the future cash flows, future cash receipts and the payments. Accruals are concerned with the expected future cash receipts and the payments, while the deferrals are concerned with the past received and the payment. Correct. Okay. What is accrual, guys? Any example of the accrual you want to give me? Accrual. That means you're supposed to make the payment. For example, you're supposed to um, salary, absolutely salary due, but you have not paid. That means you have not paid your staff salary. That means you are supposed to pay that, right? You're supposed to pay that, Vijesh, next year. Next year or whenever, next month, you have to pay that. That's accrual. What is deferred? That means you have paid in the past a lot of money and you are deferring it in the future in that case, right? You're deferring in that case, right? Insurance in that case. So that means here we are deferral is concerned with the cash payments or the receipt which you have done in the past and accruals is for the future in that case. That's why it should be the answer. Is that okay, Vijesh? Deferrals and the prepayments, yes, um, you can say that, yes. Anytime. A statement of the financial positions. Statement of the financial positions provides a basis for all the following except. Financial position, that means balance sheet. It does not tell you what is going to be your profitability, past performance, you're right.
so basically on the 1st of august 1st of august let's say 2020 you have paid the rent of 12000 and this is for 12 months this is going to be for 12 months that means up to uh, 31st july 31st july 2021 but the year is ending here here on 31st of december 2020 that means how many months are in the 2020 everyone august september october november december five months so that means 12000 divided by 12 because it is for 12 months multiplied by 5 5000 you will book it in the current year in the pnl here you are going to book it here in this case since you are booking here you will debit it in the current year so you are saying c as the answer right debit the rent expense and credit the prepaid rent in that case correct good A company received the cash of 12,000 one year's rent in advance, recorded the following transaction cash and the earned revenue. Debit this and credit the rent revenue. Right? Similar point, but on the reverse side this time. Okay, I got A, B, C. An accountant inadvertently failed to record the depreciation on the equipment. The effect of this omission is going to be okay. Why overstatement of liabilities? I understand overstatement of asset guy, but why overstatement of liabilities? People who are saying C, why overstatement of liabilities? Let's say asset value. Let's say previous year, 2020, asset value is $10,000. During the current year, 2021, the, the, you're supposed to charge a depreciation of, let's say, $1,000. Okay. That means what should be the value here in 2021, ideally? Actually, what should be the value in 2021? 9000 right? It should be 9000 But accountant has not done this that means this will not be the case that means what is appearing right now 10000 so that means overstatement of the lab asset is a correct answer overstatement of the asset is a correct answer that is correct 
so that means b cannot be the answer and d cannot be the answer is that clear everyone why b is not the answer riddhi is that good right now let's see a is the answer or c is the answer let's see when the depreciation is not charged guys that means in that year the pnl the profit will go up or down the profit will go up or down profit is going to go up in that case profit is going to go up that means retain earnings is going to go up or down reserve and surplus retain earnings will go up or down retain earnings will go up and down retain earnings is it the part of the liability or the equity it's the part of the no it is not the part of the liability it is the part of equity that means retain earnings is going up that means can i say equity is going up yes equity is going up now go back and see what should be the answer correct excellent a should be the answer correct Okay, I got A as the answer. D as the answer, B as the answer. okay let's see the company purchased the supplies the company purchased the supplies 2500 on 1st january and recorded the transaction by debiting the supplies inventory account 1000 of the supplies are still on the hand at the end of the year okay you purchase and you debited the inventory and some inventory is still with you okay the company's accountant did not prepare the appropriate adjusting entry at the end of the period what effect will have on the statement of the financial position that means what they are saying in this case what should be actually appearing in the balance sheet in that case what effect it will have you are saying b in this case that me equity is going to be understated by 1500 okay any other answer guys okay how much inventory have you purchased how much inventory have you purchased right 2500 you purchased in that case out of 2500 how much you have utilized 
correct you have utilized 1500 but 1000 is still pending in that case right when you have utilized that have you passed the debit entry yes that debit entry has been passed in that case that debit entry see recorded the transaction by debiting the supplies inventory account in that case so that means you have debited this you have already debited this in that case 1000 of the supply is done you have not done the adjusting entry that means you have not reduced the inventory when you have not reduced the inventory guys at what value inventory is still appearing 2500 inventory is still appearing at 2500 that means what should be the answer guys correct inventory is 1000 your inventory is still appearing at 2500 what should be the answer correct asset would be overstated by 1500 in that case you have not made that adjustment in that case so obviously your inventory is higher by 1500 that means inventory is the asset asset is going to be overstated by 1500 correct Correct. Inventory is current asset. And here we are talking about the to total asset. So obviously we are talking about um, inventory also, current also. Right, Vijesh? No, that's the question, Vijesh, in that case. They have charged to the supplies. They have charged to the supplies. So supplies is going fine in that case. That means the profit is correct in that case, but the inventory you have not touched upon. That's the problem. I got A as the answer. Let's see. Still, statement of the shareholders' equity. Uh, we will discuss about this, but basically, it shows how much is the beginning inventory, beginning uh, equity for you guys, and how the in equity is actually changing in that case, which is known as the um, statement of shareholders' equity, right? Okay, let's see. Company borrowed 20,000 to purchase the equipment, signed a note 6%. That means how much is the interest per month, everyone? Twenty thousand is the total amount into six percent, twelve hundred. But twelve hundred is for full year, right? Twelve percent is full year. That means how much is going to be per month? Per month is going to be hundred dollars. Is that clear, everyone? hundred dollars 
so two months november and december you are this has been accrued to you but will you pay it on november no you are going to pay it uh after six months so that means november december january february march april you are going to pay on 30th april but still your liability you are going to book your liability and you are going to book your expenditure which is going to be 200 dollars absolutely correct okay uh i think we can stop here for a break and then we're going to start uh we are having 8 45 uh, let's catch up at 905 we'll start from here thank you Okay, let's start with this. What should be the answer here, everyone? A should be the answer of this question. Okay, let's see. The company is preparing its financial statement for the current year, which of the following statement is correct. The main difference between the income statement and the statement of the cash flow is that Income statement is based on accrual and statement of cash flow is based on the cash method. This is correct. Depreciation is added back to the net income in the direct method. Uh, we have not done method, this uh, direct method, indirect method, but this is actually wrong. Second is not correct. Investing and in the financing activity that do not affect the cash do not require the disclosure. That is incorrect. We show it separately with a schedule. If a vendor allows, so that means third is also wrong. Um, so if second is wrong, third is wrong, automatically answer should be A in that case. I don't need to probably read B, fourth also, but still that's easy. If a vendor allows a company to buy on credit, it is a use of the cash for the buying company. No, it's not. 
So you're right. Here should be the answer. Very nice. Anyone? The company renewed an insurance policy for three years, beginning on the first September year four. Recorded eighty one thousand three years payment paid in the prepaid insurance amount. So you have recorded eighty one thousand in the prepaid insurance because this is the three years insurance. Okay, eighty one thousand represent an increase of twenty three thousand from fifty seven thousand charged three year ago. Okay. Now it is increase of twenty three thousand four year from the last time which you have. Done fifty seven thousand six hundred. Okay, if Nicholas only records the insurance adjustment at the end of the calendar year, the adjusting entry required to reflect the proper balance on thirty first December year four. That means when you have taken the insurance policy would be. Any other answer? Any questions? You are going to debit the insurance for nine thousand. And credit the insurance for nine thousand. Okay. Any other answers, guys? Okay, uh, fifty-seven thousand six hundred is the earlier policy, which is for three years. Uh, any other answers, guys? So fifty-seven thousand six hundred. Okay, Manish. You are missing one point, Manish. One small point you are missing here. Okay, I'll, I'll quickly cover it with a chart. So, what is the scenario, guys? On first September, Manish, right? You are taking the policy. Am I right here? For how much you are paying here? You are paying it uh, eighty-one thousand, right? You are paying eighty-one thousand. Correct. Eighty-one thousand is for how many years, everyone? Eighty-one thousand is for how many years? It's for three years. That means what is going to be per annum, everyone? Twenty-seven thousand. Absolutely correct. That means how much for this month? How much for this period? Four months is there. So twenty-seven thousand into four divided by twelve. It should be nine thousand. Right, Manish. But we have another policy which you have taken three years before. How much is the value of that policy? Value of that policy is fifty-seven thousand six hundred. How? What is the duration for that policy? Fifty-seven thousand six hundred, which is again for three years. How much is going to be per annum? Nineteen thousand two hundred is going to be per annum. How much of that share doing is going to be in this year? Eight months. So nineteen thousand two hundred divided by twelve into eight months. Divided by twelve into eight, it should be twelve thousand eight hundred. Plus nine thousand. This will come into the balance sheet now. This will come into the PNL now. That means how much? Twelve thousand eight hundred plus nine thousand. Twenty one thousand eight hundred. Right. What should be the answer, guys?
D should be the answer. You will debit the expense, Manish. You're not going to credit the expense. Expense you're going to debit. So C should be the answer. Yeah, good Vijesh. Uh, the company has an outstanding. The company has the outstanding payables of thirty thousand short term. You're saying, C for this. Okay, the company has outstanding payable of thirty thousand. Short term construction loan is going to be hundred thousand. The loan was refinanced by the issue of the long term bonds after the year end before the issuance of the financial statement. How should these liabilities going to be recorded in this case? So what is the scenario? So I got B, I got C in this case. The company has outstanding accounts payable. That means outstanding accounts payable means short-term liability, current liabilities. Short-term construction loan is 100,000. The loan was refinanced. That means 100,000 of the loan is refinanced to the long-term bond, from the long-term bonds in that case, okay? But before the issuance of the financial statement in this case, how should these liability be recorded in the balance sheet what should be the answer everyone correct it should be c y b guys it is before the issuance of the financial statement in that case, it should be C, long-term liabilities. Correct. C for this, Paminder. At the end of the year four, the company discovered a five-year insurance payment of 850,000 made on the year one was debited to the insurance expense. The entry would include what we are saying in this case, there is a five-year five year insurance. There is a five-year insurance, everyone in this case, payment is 850. And you have debited, debited it to the insurance expenses. What should be the correct entry for that? Correct entry, you are saying a debit to the insurance of 510. Why are you going to debit this, Parminder? We are not going to debit that. No, 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 no. Understand what is the problem? Problem is, sure, sure. Let's talk about that. Problem is, guys, prepaid insurance amount, which is 850, you have debited all of it in the current year. Ideally, how much should be gone into the current year, everyone? How much should go into the current year, everyone? One seventy is per annum. Let's see again. At the beginning of year four, everyone, you have discovered that whatever was that amount, you have debited everything on the year one. So that means how many years have gone? Three years have gone. Three years have gone in that case, right? Three years have gone in this case. Now, how many years are left in this case, everyone? Two years are left, right? Two years are left. That means what is going to be the insurance for the two years? What is the value of the two years amount? Correct. 340,000. Absolutely. But 
when you have booked it into the pnl everyone when you have booked into the pnl in that particular year in the first year the profit would have gone up or down in the first year when you have booked the 850000 the profits would have gone down when the profits are down guys that means retain earnings is going to be up or down is it retain earnings is low or high it is low it is down when it is wrongly down when it is wrongly down for the next two years you are going to increase the retain earnings how do you increase the retain earnings by making the credit to the retain earnings what should be the answer everyone d should be the answer are we good is that point clear everyone Let's do one or two more questions, and then we'll move for uh, the pending topic. D. Varminder, okay. At the December thirty-first year one, the one hundred twenty one point two million notes payables was included in the liability balance. Okay, the note is dated on the first October year one, bears the interest of fifteen percent payable in the three annual payment of four hundred thousand. the payment interest payment was made on the october 1st year 2 what amount should you report on the note okay this is little tricky parvin the csd any other answers everyone okay let's make it with a timeline so that you'll understand better with it i'm just feeling the number here mm. On thirty first December, a note payable was included in the liability balances. The note is dated on first October year one. So first October year one, and note payable is one point two million dollar. Everyone and uh, interest amount is. Fifteen percent, fifteen percent. Okay. Interest amount is going to be payable into per annum, and it is going to be paid into the three annual installment. Three annual installment. The amount is going to be three annual statement. What is going to be the installment amount, everyone? One point two into fifteen percent. annual installment amount is 400000 which is given in the question which is given in the question the first the first interest payment was made on the october 1st 1st october year 2 you are making the payment here okay on 1st december year 2 what amount would be the accrued we are asking what is going to be the amount here on 31st december year 2 we are looking at the interest in that case you right 8 is the balance you right 8 is the balance right but on this 8 how much is going to be the interest pending on this interest pending is going to be 15% into period for 3 months 3 by 12 so 8 into 15% into 3 divided by 12 30000 so correct parminder d should be the answer Have we done this? See, Vijesh. Okay. Um, the company's salaried employees are paid bi-weekly. That means uh, twice in a week you are paying. That advances paid to the employees are paid back by the payroll deduction. That means you deduct to 
their salary any advance that you are paying to the employees you are deducting by their salary advances in the year 1 is 24000 36000 salary is payable so these are the advances guys and this is the salary payable to you you don't know this amount right now salary expense is 40 to 420000 salary paid is going to be 390000 what is going to be the accrued balance in that case you are saying c in that case that means what is the value of question mark okay everyone uh, accrued salaries payable is it a liability or asset for you accrued salary payable is it a liability or asset it's a liability which kind of balance liability is having debit balance or credit balance so if i make a statement guys if i'm making the statement if i'm making the statement of accrued salaries where the balance bd is going to come brought down left or right where should i write the opening balance left or right where should i write if i am making the accrued salary account we are going to write the opening balance on the right opening balance right which is going to be 40000 correct 40000 is the balance how much salary you are paying during the year salary you are paying during the year is 400 salary sorry how much salary expense you are booking in this case it is 420000 how much you have actually paid during the year you paid 390000 that means what is going to be the closing balance everyone Four hundred and sixty thousand minus three hundred and ninety thousand, seventy thousand. That means what should be the answer for us? C should be the answer. Correct. Last two question, then we we'll move. Oh, that's such a big question. Okay, this is just the steps, guys. I'm just moving this. It's just the calculation of the format. Nothing complicated. Same with this also. Try these two questions. I'm leaving just these two question. If you face any problem in these two question, let me know. Okay. Let's carry on with the concept we were doing the. cash flow statement else we will not be able to finish that okay how many what cash flow statement guys if i talk about coming back to the cash flow statements how many ways you can calculate the cash flow statement guys how many ways you can make the cash flow statements two ways what are the two ways guys direct method and the indirect method direct method and the indirect method okay direct method and the indirect method you right so in the direct method and the indirect method the entire cash flow is going to change entire cash flow statement is going to change everyone <clears throat> yeah everything is going to change in that case correct not everything is going to change if i talk about direct method everyone if i talk about indirect method oa is the only thing which is going to change ia and fa this is going to be ditto 
no change at all there is not going to be any change under both the methods is that point okay the only change is going to be in the oa even even guys if i'm telling let's say direct method indirect method even if i talking about the operating activities the values will remain exactly the same that means if it is $10000 here it is going to be $10000 here also that means value is also not going to change then what is changing only the presentation is going to change only the presentation is going to change that's it so nothing is changing actually in that case the only the presentation is changing and the presentation of only the oa is changing that's it rest nothing is actually changing in that case no change in ia not even in the value not even in the disclosure not even in the presentation similarly with the fa no change in that case in the oa change will happen and change is only in the presentation it's a wrong notion in our head we always thought that it's going to be absolutely different in that case no it's not going to be 100% different in that case it is only and only the presentation different are we good is that okay everyone okay i'll i'll discuss how we are going to do adjust the going forward approach in that case how to do in this case but before i just move i just want to cover the very basic few points in that also how do we make the cash flow statement guys we say this is our opening cash everyone right this is going to be our cash flow from the operating activities plus minus cash flow from the ia plus minus cash flow from the fa we are going to adjust all the three items and then balance is going to be closing cash cash and cash equivalents in that case cash equivalents in that case this all the three items guys oa ia fa it is also known as change in cash it is known as change in the cash so in a way guys i can also write opening cash plus changes in the cash flow is going to plus minus changing in the cash flow is going to be closing cash is that okay everyone any doubt yep okay let's quickly try one question over everyone um let's say opening cash is coming um, 1000 oa is coming 12700 which is cash inflow um ia is coming 1000 cash outflow fa is coming 8500 again cash outflow what is going to be closing cash everyone no closing balance what is the closing balance 23200 okay ready so 23200 i got 4200 any other answers everyone okay let's say guys i'll i'll come back to that let's say this is your bank account this is your bank account okay your opening balance 
Parminder, your opening balance in the bank account is ten thousand. You got a salary. You got a salary of let's say fifty thousand rupees. You paid your rent. Okay, you paid your rent of twenty five thousand. You have gone for vacation, and there you paid uh, five thousand. What should be your balance in the bank account? Vidhi, what should be the balance in the bank account? Everyone, simple question. Thirty thousand. Yes, this plus this minus this. Whatever is my cash outflow, I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to reduce that also. So you're absolutely correct. Uh, Sixty thousand minus thirty thousand. The balance is going to be absolutely thirty thousand. Similarly, here with the also, it is cash outflow. Should we not reduce this? Yes, we are going to reduce this. Yeah. So the balance here is going to be four thousand two hundred. I hope it is okay. So, guys, generally, generally, whatever is the cash inflow, we represent it by positive, and whatever is the cash outflow, we represent by negative or something in the bracket in that case. So, be careful about the question. How the question is actually asking you these details in that case. Okay, moving on, moving on. Um, let's move to the first method, which is the indirect method. Indirect method. Let's talk about that. very simple if i am making the pnl guys what is the last value which comes under the pnl is the profit after taxes is depreciation is reduced from this or not guys when i am arriving at the pad is depreciation already reduced in that case yes is depreciation a cash item that means for charging depreciation is any cash going out of your pocket no so that means depreciation is a non cash item so guys if my pat is coming let's say 500 dollars and the depreciation is 10 dollars can you tell me what is going to be my cash amount i will add the depreciation in that case so i will say 500 dollars plus 10 dollars that should be 510 is that point clear everyone yes no maybe obviously we are going to do a lot of adjustment in that case so manish what i'm saying is if i'm starting with the pat and if i want to reach to the cash flow right if i want to reach to the cash flow should we not add the depreciation because this 10 dollars of the depreciation manish it's already reduced from that right correct it's non cash any non cash item is already reduced from that when it is reduced in that case to arriving at the cash flow should we not add this back so that's why we are doing it we are adding the non cash items Okay. I hope it is okay. Should I move? Okay. <clears throat> Hear me out for two minutes. Very tricky point. I'm going to discuss with you. Very very tricky point. I'm going to discuss with you. Generally, people don't understand this point. let's say everyone you have purchased any investments you purchase for 1000 dollars in the year 2020 when you have purchased in the year 2020 would that be cash outflow or cash inflow first of all cash outflow correct which activity is that ia oa fa it's ia are we good i think this is okay okay 
in the year everyone in the year 2022 you have sold that investment how much 1500 dollars everyone i a o a f a it is cash inflow and it is going to be i a absolutely correct how much is the gain everyone Five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars going to be here in that case. Up till here, are we good or not, everyone? Up till here, are we good or not? Yes. Okay. Now this gain, guys, will that gain will come into the PNL? Yes. That means would that be included in the PAT? Yes, that would be included in the PAT. Okay, that would be included in the pat in this case. Okay, let's say I am making the cash flow statement, guys. I am writing OA, I am writing IA, I am writing FA. Okay, I am making the PNL, everyone. I am writing here gain on the investment. How much I should write a gain in the investment? Five hundred dollars, right? Let's say there is no income, there is no other sale. Let's say there is no other expenditure, nothing. That means how much is going to be the pet, and let's assume there is no taxes also for the time being. How much is going to be the pet, everyone? Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars is going to be the pet in this case. Correct. So that means what is going to be my OA? What is going to be my OA? Five hundred dollars, Manish. Why zero? Five hundred dollars. Whatever is the starting point, pet. We are going to take five hundred dollars in that case. Correct. Okay, what is your IA in this question, guys? What is the IA in this case? In this case, what should be the IA? Fifteen hundred. IA is fifteen hundred. How much is the total coming? Two thousand dollars. But are you actually receiving two thousand dollars, everyone? No, you're not receiving two thousand dollars in that case. That's the problem. That's the problem in this case. Whenever we are following the indirect method, that means whenever we are starting with the pet, it is nothing but the duplication which is happening in that case. That is why whenever we are starting with the indirect method, that means whenever we are starting with the pet, we are going to add the depreciation. And if you are having any gain, we are going to reduce the gain. People generally get confused in that case. Gain should be added. Why are we reducing the gain? We are reducing the gain, guys, to avoid the duplication. To avoid the duplication, we are doing that. Are we good? Is that point clear, everyone? Similarly, losses, if there are anything, we are going to add back the losses. Same logic for the same also. Same logic for the same also to avoid the duplication because everything automatically is coming into the IA in that case. So that means what should be the answer here? It should be five hundred. I'm writing here, and I'm going to reduce five hundred from in that case. That means it should be zero. That means what should be the value come here? It should be zero. Five hundred minus five hundred. That means what should be the total here? It should be fine now, fifteen hundred. I hope it is okay. So, what is the format coming up? Format is coming up. Pat plus the depreciation minus the gain on sale of asset plus the loss on the sale. Let's read up till here from the book, and then I'm going to move. Preparation of the statement of the cash flows, everyone. The statement of the cash flow may be prepared using the direct method or the indirect method. The only difference between these two methods is the format of the operating section. No change otherwise. It is just the format and only the OA, nothing else. 
the direct method separates the cash disbursement and the cash receipt we are going to find out the difference in that case indirect method everyone begins with the accrual basis net income net income means pat and adjust for the various items in that case both methods result in the amount for the cash flow that means the amount is going to be exactly same no change amount is going to be exactly the same in this case on your cp cma exams guys only indirect method is going to be there so we are not going to discuss the direct method only the indirect method is there so i'll discuss only the indirect method with you preparing the statement of the cash flow requires gathering information for three other information for example we are going to do the income statement statements of the equity comparative balance sheet and the footnotes we are going to discuss all of it later in this case so operating activities everyone first of all we are going to make the adjustment so we are going to start with the net income pat and then we are going to adjust for the non cash expenses also that means we are going to add the non cash expense non cash expense means depreciation any amortization in that case we are going to add this back some expenses have no effect on the cash some expenses have no effect on the cash for example depreciation expense is a non cash expense it does not represent the outflow of the cash however depreciation expense does not reduce the amount of the net income reported by the entity so it does reduce the amount of the pat therefore to determine the cash flows from the operating activities depreciation amortization and other non cash is are added back in this case okay everyone similarly after adding to the net income the amount of the non cash expenses the effect of the gains and the losses are eliminated by separating all the gains subtracting all the gains everyone and adding the losses whatever the losses you are having you are adding in that case gains and the losses relate to the investing activity and it should not be included on the oa because already you are capturing this in the investing activity for example if the land that cost $20000 is sold for 23000 in that case 23000 is automatically coming under the ia whatever is the 3000 gain which is under the oa we will undo that we will remove that 3000 gain on the sale of the investment is recognized on the income statement in the investing sections this is going to be recorded as 23000 net income includes 3000 gain which must be reversed in that case we will do undo that when calculating the cash flow from the operation so that the cash flow from the sale is only reported under ia it is going to be reported under the ia in that case i hope it is okay everyone okay current liabilities i'm going to cover it tomorrow itself okay quickly try we'll quickly try few questions few questions we are going to try on the cash flows um then we'll move some few items we are going to calculate here the purpose of the statement of the cash flow is best described as everyone is saying c showing how the cash balance changed during the reporting period correct very nice okay investing in the projects and activity that enhances the employee capabilities and the skills create the value in which kind of a capital human capital good
which of the following items does not represent a resource that company can use to create the value you're saying impaired inventory correct The purchase of the fixed assets, the purchase of the fixed assets should be accounted for statement of the cash flow as investing activity. Correct. reporting operating cash flows on the entity's cash flow would include which of the following item mm, okay correct okay integrated report we have not done it but uh, try and answering this question what looks more logical to you? D, integrated report is prepared to show how the organization creates the value, except correct. That's the meaning of integrated report because you're not just focusing on the, on the one company only for everyone, all the stakeholders you are following in that case. We'll discuss the integrated report later. See, in the statement of the cash flow, business transactions are classified into the operating, investing, and the financing. Correct. All of the following should be classified under which operating sections except uh, depreciation, yes. Increase in the taxable income, yes. Increase in the prepaid insurance, yes. Purchase of the land in exchange for this. Correct. Under which item it is going to come? It is going to be non-cash item, right? Correct.
sorry, handle. handle. The successful and the profitable launch of a new product line by an entity represent value erosion, no, value preservation, no, value realization, no, value creation, correct. Okay, I got A, I got D in that case, which of the following is not an element of the integrated report. Uh, again, not much relevance because we have not done it, but uh, you're saying D, you're saying A, correct, variance analysis in that case, because here we are talking about integrated report, uh, uh, which is going to talk about the organization, society, uh, creditors, employ, everyone in that case. This report is not about that what is your actual, what is budget, and what is the variance analysis. It's not that. That's why variance analysis is not the element of the integrated report. Okay, it's a mix up question which is coming. Yeah, we can do this. Which of the following, everyone, which of the following should be classified as operating activities? Decrease in the accounts payable. Correct. Excellent. Cash dividend per member is going to be uh, FA. You're saying C? Statement of the cash flow prepared using the indirect would have the cash flow activities as the following. Operating, financing, and investing. Why C, guys? It should be D, right? That's how we are done. OA, IA, FA, that's the sequence we follow. So yeah, this should be the answer.
I don't know why is it coming. Um, A should be the answer. Okay. On a statement of the cash flow, the cash flow from the financing activity would be reduced by which of the following? Should D not be the answer, everyone? Should D not be the answer? Should D be the answer, John? No, D will not be the point because it is correct, Riddhi. It is going to be non-cash item. It's a non-cash item. Conversion of the bonds paying the common stock. That's why D is not the answer. Answer should be A in that case. A guys, cash inflow, cash outflow. Cash outflow. Correct. John, are we good? The most commonly used method for calculating and, and reporting a net cash flow from operating on it is known as indirect method. Correct. On a statement of the cash flows, cash flow from the investing activities would be decreased by which of the following? Purchase of the long term? Correct. Okay, I'm moving to this. Uh, purchase of treasury stock, guys, where will it come, Manish? Financing, so both will come under financing. It should be purchase of treasury stock. Interest comes under OA. Interest come under OA. I think in India, interest comes under FA. Am I, wrong? Am I right? In India, I guess, in the cash flow statement, yeah, I think so. There is a gap actually. Uh, yes. So here it's not the case. Here it's not the case in US. Um, in US, it does not come under the. It does not come under the FA. It is going to come under the IA in that. So it is going to come under the OA in that case. So yeah, we should be the answer.
uh, the corporation paid the dividend to its shareholders following the achievement of the record product. Dividend distribution represent the value creation, value provision, value erosion, value realization. Any other answers, guys? Value preservation, okay. D, okay, correct, it should be D, it should be realization. See, value creation is, guys, when you're creating anything, dividend is basically, you have done a good work, you have you have done a good business in that case, you have generated in the cash flow in that case, and then you're distributing it to your shareholders. That means you have realized it, and then you're distributing in that case. That's why it is going to be realization in that case. Is that okay? Okay, guys, do we have anyone's question? Antariksh, do you have any questions? Accordingly, I'll keep the last 10 minutes for you. Do you have any question? Anyone, any doubt, anything if you want me to repeat? Or are we good? No? Okay. Uh, I would suggest, guys, please uh, uh, read everything. If you face any problem, let me know. I'll continue with the MCQs then. So you'll ask me later, Manish. It's okay. You can send on the WhatsApp also. I'll cover it in the class then. A company's ability to maintain the market share with the high customer satisfaction and the sustained profitability is an example of the value preservation. Absolutely. Preserve, that means you are trying to maintain everything in that case. That's preservation, correct? I'm leaving integrated reporting. We have not 100% done this question, but uh, maybe try this if you're aware of this. D. Manish, is that the D? How do we calculate the indirect method? We start with the pack, then we add the depreciation, then we do the plus minus of the gains in that case, right? So it is not the indirect method because it says major here they are saying the cash receipt and the cash payment. It is not the indirect method. It should be direct method, guys. Right? Because we have not done this, but it is going to be direct method in that case. I'll discuss this with you tomorrow. What are the major changes in the direct method and the indirect method? Though direct method is not the part of your curriculum, but still I will tell you on a broad basis what is the broad the the direct and the indirect in that case. Try the rule of elimination in this case, guys. That means anything which is not looking correct to you, start deleting that and then find what should be the answer. Okay. 
A. Okay. So, interest received. Where will it go, Manish? When you're saying it is not OA, where will it go? IA? Okay. See all the options, guys. You will easily get the answer. You will easily get the answer. Good, Parminder. Dividend paid Manish, is it operating activity? No. Which activity is that? It's FA. It's FA. So yes, C should be the answer. Correct. Is it okay, everyone? Yeah. All of the following, all of the following would affect the operating cash flow of a firm with the exception of. Is C going to affect the operating cash flows, everyone? No. Then what should be the answer? Should C be the answer? Correct. C should be the answer. Is that okay? Are you guys clear? Purchase of the treasury stock, treasury bonds in that case, it is not purchase of the treasury bonds in that case. It is not going to be the, it is not going to be the OA. Which activity is that? Purchase of the treasury bonds, which, which activity is that? It's happy? No. Treasury bonds. Treasury bonds is not the treasury stock, guys. What is the difference in the treasury bonds and this? Treasury stock is basically you are purchasing your stock, right? Which is treasury stock. Treasury bonds, when I'm referring here, the treasury bonds, here basically I'm talking about the US treasury. Basically the US finance ministry I'm talking about. So basically what we are saying here, you are purchasing the government bond. When you're purchasing the government bond in that case, that means it is the investing activities. That means it is not the OA. Correct? Okay. Now, 
last question our score is 100% let's close at 100% only Where A will go, guys? John, Manish, where A will go then? Away? So, Manish, you're saying A is going to be IA, right? Is that what you're saying? Manufacturing, purchasing manufacturing equipment is IA or OA? It's IA guys, it's IA. If it is the IA, then how can it be the answer? Because it is asking you, all of the following should be classified as IA, except, so basically they are looking in this case, what is not an IA? A is IA, so that means A should not be the answer. Right, John? Uh, B is IA, is B IA? Yes, B is also IA. Is D as IA? Yes, D is also IA. You're purchasing the stock for another company. Cash flow to the lenders for interest. This is going to be OA. C should be OA and it is not IA. Absolutely correct. Are we good? Is that okay? Yes, John, are we good? Mm, C, you are saying? Lounge was IA? You are saying C is IA? Which loan are you saying is IA? Cash outflow to the lenders for the interest. Is that what you're saying is IA? It is OA. No, it is OA. It says investing activity is except. It is not a IA. If it is IA, then it should not be the answer. It is going to be OA. Basically, simply, Manish, if you look at the language, what they are saying is interest payment. Interest payment is not a IA. Interest payment is going to be OA. I think we have done it earlier also. Interest payment is a OA. All right. Perfect. Let's stop here only, guys. Please revise and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll start from here. Please join at 6.30. We'll start from there. All right. Thank you so much and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good night.